What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Filthy Report. My name is Jason Filthy Jones, bringing you the dirtiest information with the cleanest style. USC 255, it's in the books. The fight's over. Let's get into some fight talk. All right, guys. I know, I know. I missed out on a week. I'm sorry. I had to head down to California to go handle some business. I'm back at it again, ready to give you guys this breakdown. But before we give you the UFC 255 breakdown, I'm going to go over a couple of things that went on in the Paul Felder and Rafael Dos Anjos fight. Just touch bases on it since I didn't get to give you guys that recap for that fight. So we did learn a big thing from that fight, and which would be that um, RDA is still a force to be reckoned with at the 155 division. So we'll be seeing him probably get placed in the bottom of the top 10 and see what kind of matchups they give him to him. He's going to be chasing after that lightweight gold again. Um, I can see him doing a pretty good uh, chance of getting to the top. Do I see him getting the belt? I don't know because there's such a log jam and there's some really, really, really tough fighters. And I would hate to see what is going to happen with them to go up against Tony Ferguson again. Well, but it has been a few years, so let's see how it goes. Now, with Paul Felder, yes, he did lose that fight, but he looked phenomenal and on short day on short notice. So with Paul Felder, uh, I still think he's still right there at the top of the uh, division with the top five. He can still mix it up. Let's see what matchups they throw to him. I wouldn't mind seeing him go up against Chandler. Um and who wouldn't love to see a Paul Felder and Gagey fight? That would be phenomenal. Uh, other than that, let's get into this UFC 255. Now, I know, guys, I know it doesn't seem like it was the greatest card for a pay-per-view fight. Um, but it did turn out to be a pretty decent card. There was a ton of finishes. Uh, showed that people can have bad nights sometimes. And pretty much that was about it. Now, was this the best card to come back in to for a recap? Probably not, because uh, there were so many finishes. And um, a lot of the fights were heavy favorites. But that's how the fight game goes. Let's get into it. Um, first off, have to give props out to Anatino Shlomenko, uh, which is Valentina Sh- uh, Shlomenko's uh, sister, older sister. She's looking like a beast at the 125 division. Um, she showed that she's rounding off her uh, MMA career with a good grappling base. Um, so where do I see her going in this? I see that she can be breaking into the top 10. Now, there are a few questions that leads me here with this because, you know, as as well as you guys know, her sister is the queen of the division for the 125 um, flyweight division. So do the sisters fight? Do they not fight? Uh, does one sister leave the division? And who would be the one to leave the division? With me, I honestly think it would probably be Valentina. Um, she has fought at 135. I don't know if her sister's ever competed at 135. I don't think she has. And I don't think she she's really, really tall. So I don't think she can um, make that 115 weight. But hey, who knows? But she is looking great. She literally dominated her fight um, from bell to bell. And I give her nothing but props, especially against um, Lipsky. Lipsky is not an easy task at all for anybody. Um, of course, we have to talk about the knockout sensation. Uh, Joaquin Buckley came back on this card and devastating knockout again. Um, he's looking like a force to be reckoned with. I will have to admit to you guys that I do see a lot of holes in his game. Um, he's not the most technical. He really gauges his fight off of his power. Uh you guys can see in that fight against Jordan Wright. And, and trust me, guys, Jordan Wright's no slouch either. He was an undefeated fighter, has a really good all-round kind of MMA game. Um, but Buckley just put the pressure on him and hit him with some really, really heavy shots and got him out of there quickly. Now, my thing is, what does the UFC do with them? Because we all know how this goes with the UFC. When you start getting finish after finish after finish and you just start getting nothing but popularity... You get skyrocketed into the top 10. Now, you guys tell me in the comments or on the Instagram. Let me know. Do you guys really think Joaquin Buckley would last in the top 10 against, I mean, pick pick one of the, I'm better yet, 
pick Derek Brunson. Put him up against Derek Brunson. How, how well do you think that fight's going to go for him? I'm not saying that he's not good. I'm just saying I think he needs a little bit more grooming and he should grow. Now, if you guys notice, and th this is the way I, I look at things because I think of things of how um, promoters act and how marketing ability is for anything about fighting. And as you guys notice that uh, Joe wasn't trying to get trying to say the name John Krause, but uh, Buckley didn't want to even say his name in the post fight speech. But Joe was trying to bait him to say it. Now, to me, I think that's kind of a play of the promotion that they want him to fight John Krause because Krause is no slouch either. He's a very good, phenomenal fighter. He's been more concentrating on coaching his team than actually fighting. He picks up a fight here and there just because he likes the competitive ability that he gets to do in, in a fight. So um, Krause back out, 185 against Buckley. Um, Buckley has a lot of power there, but Krause is just so technically savvy with his jiu-jitsu. His striking is actually really, really just really good. Uh, I I don't think Buckley would be able to take that fight, but I do see them pushing him to fight uh, Kraus in his next fight to slow him down before he gets in the top 10. Now, this is how my mind works because what I'm thinking that they're trying to do is see who wins in the Kevin Holland versus Jack Hermanson fight. And that fight's going to be coming up soon too. Now, with that, if I see Kevin Holland winning, I see him getting Buckley. I also see if Kevin Holland loses, it will probably be Buckley and Kevin Holland to see who's going to actually get tossed back into fighting the top 10. Uh, and we'll, when that matchup gets made, which I really believe that matchup will probably get made, um, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But other than that, uh, the next fight to talk on this card would have to be uh, Tim Means versus Mike Perry. Now, guys, understand this. UFC's biggest thing that they hate is catch weights, not coming in on weight. And I um, with Mike Perry, uh, he's had a lot of problems. He's uh, His career has had a lot of ups and downs. Yes, he's an enjoyable and entertaining fighter. He uh, has a very bully kind of style, um, very aggressive really hard-nosed striker and has phenomenal knockout power. Now, where do you go with Mike Perry? I, I don't know because we did see that Tim Means pretty much beat the brakes off of him. The fight was a great fight. It was a real back-and-forth fight, but Tim Means just etched out his way throughout that whole fight. Now, what do you do with Mike Perry? He's a loose cannon that if you just let him go... I would see that he would probably end up just going ape shit off of on everybody. He's been in and out of jail. He's had countless problems with running into the law since his UFC career. I feel that maybe the UFC should look into like developing something at the PI for for people that have situations like that. I and, and I'm I'm not dogging Mike Perry at all. I actually really like Platinum Mike Perry. I just feel like he needs a little bit of help because he's a loose cannon and going in all different ways. And what would be the best thing for him would probably get into a really good fight team. And that's going to take away all that that bullshit and just get him focused because if you guys think about it Mike Perry, if he could get his ground game tightened up and he could actually focus in detail, focus on planning an actual game plan for a fight, I I think he could be at the top five of the, the welterweight division with no problem. But we'll see how it goes. Props out to Tim Means. A really good win for him. I think he'll be sitting at the uh, top 15 and he's probably going to break in. Let's see who they match him up with. I mean, if you guys look at this, lightweight, welterweight, middleweight, it's all pretty much a log jam. And uh, light heavyweight is sort of a log jam too because um, mixing in with the middleweight issue, issue that's going on right now. 
but it's just it's hard to see where these fighters are going to be going to next if they're going to be sitting out but with me i would think just stay active the more fights you win the better chances of you getting that title shot so we'll see how it goes i um hopefully tim means can break into the top 10 maybe in the middle of next year now the next fight I want to talk about is going to be Valentina Shevchenko versus Jennifer Maya. This is a really weird one to talk about because when you think about it, everybody, they, I mean, you could go through my videos, you could go through anybody's podcast, any other YouTube videos. They're gonna, there's not really anybody that's ever going to pick against Valentina Shevchenko. She is one of the top elite women's uh, fight champions in the world and pretty much sits right under Amanda Nunes. If if I was to label my top women MMA fighters, it would probably probably go Amanda Nunes, Valentina Shaminko, uh Chris Sideborg, um Rose Navin Yunus, and Joanna Yo- and Jacek. Now, and don't forget, uh, Kayla Harris is sitting right behind there. I'm not saying Ronda Rousey, reason being she's more she's retired. Uh, I would say that she's more of a, a Hall of Famer for the MMA world. And that's what a grain of salt. Talk about that some other time. Um, anyways, uh, but other than that, there you have to look at it as being this. Some people have great nights. Some people are phenomenal champions. And some people just have an off night. Now, were everybody sitting at the edge of their seats from uh, in the second round of the Valentina Shemiko versus Jennifer Maya fight? Probably because in the beginning, uh, Valentina was just bringing it to Jennifer Maya. And then in the second round, it seemed like she took off. I also think it, it could be a problem with... Valentina and her sister fighting on the same card. Reason being, if you guys saw Anatina's fight, she was using a very heavy grappling, wrestling kind of style, trying to show off that. If you look at Valentina's fight, it looks like she was doing the same thing, that they were working so much on Anatina's uh, fighting style that, or game plan that she developed the game plan using more of her wrestling and grappling style, which isn't a problem because uh, Valentina is really good on the ground. I mean, she's also submitted Juliana Pena, who's no slouch on the ground either. But um, it just seemed that she had an off night and she went for a different option. Maybe she was trying to show that she can go five hard rounds, maybe. But right after the second round, we all know that from the third to the fifth, Valentina just took it and ran with it and basically beat Jennifer to a, a pretty much a pulp. Like she, she didn't show any improvements, wasn't able to get anything off on uh, Valentina too much anymore after the second round. So uh, from there, I just think Valentina is still a hard champion to fight with. Now with Valentina Shaminko, where do we go with her from here? Not really sure. There's not really a clear-cut number one contender for the flyweight women's division right now. Uh, They are talking about Jessica Andrade. She is coming off a one-fight win streak off off of Caitlin Jakagian. And yes, Caitlin Jakagian did get a fight uh, win on this fight card too. But she just fought Valentina at the beginning of the year. So I think she's probably going to have to get like another one or two fights. Or they could probably go with another running it back of Jessica Andrade versus Caitlin Jakagian. We'll see. Not sure. But I don't see anybody dethroning Valentina Shaminko. Now, if you guys do know, um, the Megan Anderson and uh, Amanda Nunes fight is actually off. And I know they're going to still book that fight to happen where Megan Anderson is going to fight Anders, uh, Amanda Nunes. Now, the other question is, is Amanda really going to want to drop back down to 135? I mean, there's not really a standout contender for for there either. I mean, they could toss it to Holly Holm, but we're not sure. But the reason I'm talking about all this is there is a chance for Valentina Shamiko to go up and fight uh, Amanda Nunes again. Do I see the fight work turning 
and having a couple of differences? I, I think so. Uh, I will guarantee you guys that if they did fight again, there is a possible chance that Valentina could win all these times of her competing as a champion. She's just developing and getting way. Better. All right, guys, but all that being said, let's get into this main event fight, which is going to be Davidson Figueredo versus Alex Perez. Now, there's not much to talk about on this fight because the fight ended so quickly. And it just shows you how evolved the flyweights have become because they do have knockout power and they do have finishing ability where they're able to choke you out and submit you quickly. Now, the fight was great. Alex Perez came in game. It was short notice. Hopefully, Alex will be able to um, earn another title shot and get back to there to fight for the title again. Just seems like he was moved through the rankings a little bit too quickly. But it is what it is. We now have uh, the 125 King, which is going to be Davison Figueredo. He just did his title defense, and he looked great. Now, what I do want to talk to you guys about the flyweights is this. Don't forget that um, Figueredo and all of them were on the chopping block just last year. Yes, uh, Henry Cejudo did save the division. Yes, Demetri Johnson was one of the greatest flyweight champions ever and will probably always be the um, flyweight king. But here's my issue with Davison Figueredo. He has marketability, he has charisma, he has knockout power, he has finishing ability. But when your own president says that he would like to get Figueredo on the card again because of weight complications. It just kind of scares me. Like, where are we going with it? Is a is a 125 division still on the shopping block or are they going to keep it going on? Because I really do get scared that Figueredo is not going to be able to make the weight every single time. He cuts a lot of weight. Um, it's not easy for him to cut the weight. Now, the other thing is, is he killing himself? Because it doesn't look like he's killing himself with being able to uh, put out people on the feet and also put people on the floor and choke them out with no problem. I hope he's going to be a well-off champion, but I think that the UFC will probably keep him there for a little bit, maybe one or two more fights, maybe three. I think what they're trying to see is um, if he can take out uh, the baby assassin, which is Brandon Moreno, which uh, they're going to be booking the fight for them. We'll talk about that in the news. But other than that, um, I just, I, I, I don't see him sitting there for too long. I think they're either trying to go with the um, Brandon Moreno fight or they're going to go with the Cody Garbrandt fight. Because if Cody Garbrandt can make 125, I'm pretty sure that the USC would like to have him as a champion because he can consistently make 125 and he'd probably be devastating knockout power in the flyweight division. All right, let's get into this fight. Breakdown of UFC Fight Night, Curtis Blades versus Derek Lewis. And just like I told you guys in the recap of UFC 255, this probably isn't the best card to come into and do a fight talk for. But if you're a degenerate like me, that probably tells me that you've been watching every MMA fight that you can and keeping your eyes glued to the screen. Now, with that being said, guys, there's probably only two fights on this card that you probably know about. If you're a hardcore fan or even a casual fan because it, their names carry some kind of clout. And that would be Anthony Smith versus Devin Clark and also Curtis Blaze versus Derek Lewis. So I will be breaking down those two fights and also a third fight, which would be Ashley Evan Smith versus Norma du uh, Dumont. And she's going to be the prelims main main event. Now, to break down that fight, I'm going to have to say Ashley Evan Smith is a gritty nose fighter that likes to push the pace and make it a dirty fight. And getting you to the floor, getting you up against the cage, and just striking the hell out of you. Not a great submission game, but we'll see what she can do against Norma Dumont, who's actually a heavy kicker and likes to push the pace, keeping keep you in kickboxing, but can have the opportunity to get you to the floor and take you out that way too. So with that fight, I'll probably be going with Ashley. Now, moving on to the co-main event, which is going to be Anthony Smith versus Devin Clark. Now, there's a little bit of a question that comes into this fight because, as you guys know, Anthony Smith is a really phenomenal fighter, great fighter, all-round fighter, has already competed for the lightweight championship against John Jones. But recently, he's been on a really tough skid, and he hasn't been able to come off of it, and he hasn't been looking too great in his fights. 
Now, back at this in the co-main event, it seems like this is a very good chance for him to break out again and show that he's still one of the top of the division of the light heavyweights. So we'll be seeing how he can do it against Devin Clark. And don't get me wrong, Devin Clark's no slouch either, has really good heavy hands and likes to push a pace too. But I just don't see him being able to take on the technical savviness of Anthony Smith and also the ground game that Anthony Smith has. And I'm going to take Anthony Smith in that. And probably I'll give Anthony Smith a TKO in the second round. With that, we get into the main event. Now, this is the one I really want to talk to you guys about because it's Curtis Blaze versus Derek Lewis. Now, you guys all know that a lot of people always say Derek Lewis uh, is either overweight or doesn't have cardio or isn't able to push through the push through the fight. With me, I'm a little bit different about that because it, to me, it doesn't seem like Ger Derek Lewis has that much of a cardio issue from when he started his career to where he is now. He's actually taken it a lot more serious after he got into that title fight against Daniel Cormier, and he's try been trying to get back to that title shot again. Now, in this fight, all I have to say is I, you have to pray to God that Derek doesn't end up on the floor against Curtis Blaze. Now, one or two or three times, maybe uh, Derek will be able to get out of it with just his unbelievable strength and power, but... Curtis Blaze is no slouch at wrestling, and he loves to put you on the floor and just beat you to a pulp. Now, that being said, there is one thing that Derek Lewis carries from the beginning to the ending of the fight, and that's his knockout power with one-shot KO power. So, all I can say is this. Hopefully, Derek will be able to push um, Blades back and knock him out. If not, I can see this being a long night for Derek, and Curtis Blaze is no slouch at uh, taking you down, double-legging you, and keeping your ass on that floor and ground and pounding you out. With that being said, Curtis Blaze is on a fight-winning streak, and I wouldn't be surprised if he beats Derek Lewis, he'll probably get the next title shot at whoever wins against Stipe versus Francis Ngannou. Let's get into these fight announcements and this fight news. Now, this is mostly going to cover most of uh, UFC 256 because there's been a lot of changes here and there, fights added, fights changed, and all that. Biggest news coming out for UFC 256, Peter Yan and Aljamain Sterling for the 135 title is going to be off now. Not really given a reason, but it, it has to do with something with Peter Yan and it's a personal issue, so he's not really coming out and saying what's going on. But hopefully they get that back on track in, in 2021 that they'll be ready to go. With that, they swap out and put in Davison Figueredo versus Brandon Moreno. Now... What I was talking to you guys about that in the recap of the 255 is this. The reason that they're throwing this fight on is, one, Brandon didn't take any damage um, in his fight on uh, USC 255. And also, Davis and Figueroa didn't take any um, damage either. But the other reason is, Dana wants to keep him in there because Davis and Figueroa is actually on point and on weight. He probably won't get out of shape and be ready to go in the next two to three weeks. So... That's my issue with Davison Figueredo for him um, holding on to the flyweight championship, not knocking the man, think he is a great uh, champion, and he'd probably be a devastating champion. I just don't understand if he's going to be able to keep at a consistency of staying at that weight and being able to make uh, the, the title weight every single time. So with that being said, that's it for that one. The, um, the other fights that have been added to the UFC 256 card would also be one of the biggest fights that everybody's been freaking waiting for, which is going to be Tony Ferguson versus Charles um, Charles Oliveira. Now, this is a fight that is going to be mind blowing. It puts in the question: Is will Tony keep it on the feet? Will he keep it with his striking? Will he be cutting um, Charles Oliveira with those elbows, or are they going to get into a jujitsu match? Now, trust me on this: Tony is good on it with jujitsu, but Charles Oliveira also holds the most uh, submissions in the UFC, and he is no slouch on the floor and can strangle you from anywhere. He just has a different type of squeeze. Now, since they made that match, it also puts me to wondering, what are they going to be doing with Michael Chandler? A lot of people have been talking about that it was going to be Michael Chandler versus Tony Ferguson on this card, but now it seems that it's switched up to being Charles Oliveira. So keep in the back of your mind, that could mean a really big fight, which I would love to see on, in 2021, would be Michael Chandler versus Justin Gaethje. Other than that, the other fight announcements that I have is also going to be 
for the other fight announcement I have for you guys is going to be the December 19th card, which is going to be Chaos Williams versus Michelle Pereira. Now, understand, guys, Michelle Pereira is no slouch. He likes to keep it moving. He likes to keep it entertaining. He's the one that does all the backflips, the kicks off the cage and everything. But, like, you just saw Chaos Williams at that RDA fight versus Paul Felder. Chaos Williams no slouch. Put your ass out in quick seconds. And the reason they call him Chaos is because he brings nothing but chaos. Can't wait for that fight. That's going to be a great fight. The other fight announcement that I have is also going to be UFC 258, which they're running back a fight that was outside of the UFC, which would be Uriah Hall versus Chris Weidman. Great fight for both of them. Let's see who's going to be able to stick around in the top 10. Other than that, that's pretty much all I have for the fight announcements. And for the bit of fight news that I have, we all know, we, you guys have all heard, the biggest fight that's going to start and kick off the UFC's year for 2021 is going to be Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor 2. Also, if you guys are degenerates about combat fighting, there's going to be a fight um, this week that's going to be Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones in a boxing match, and you're going to see Stylebender being on the desk as a commentator for that fight. Probably not going to miss that fight. All right, guys, that's all the fight announcements and fight news I have for you guys this week. I wanted to say sorry again for not getting out that fight recap for you guys last week. I will be back to it and getting back to the grind, and I'll be back next week with the fight night of Curtis Blaze versus Derek Lewis recap. And if you guys have the time, please hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys are doing for Thanksgiving. Let me know what you guys are looking forward for Thanksgiving. I want to tell you guys, I'm always thankful for everybody that subscribed. Thank you for trying out the Filthy Report. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the Filthy Report. My name is Jason Filthy Jones, bringing you the dirtiest information with the cleanest style. Peace.